Thank you for participating in our Beit Midrash's learn program of learning in advance of Yom Hazikaron. Working in tandem with several communal organizations, including B'nai Akiva Schools, B'nai Akiva, NCSY, JLIC, and Mizrahi Canada, we expect to publish a brief video on a chapter of Tehillim each day for 10 days through Yom Hazikaron on Monday, May 1st. Each video will be dedicated in memory of a particular person whose life is commemorated on Yom HaZikaron. To sign up to receive links to each day's video via email, please go to the link in the description below. Today's video is dedicated in memory of Rabbi Nechemia Lavi, Nechemia ben Yechezkel, Zichrono Lebracha. From the IDF Memorial website, we are told Rabbi Nechemia, an IDF reservist, was a husband, a father, and a teacher at a Jerusalem yeshiva. When Aaron Bennett, a rabbi in the Breslov Hasidic community of Beit Elit, was attacked by a Palestinian in the old city of Jerusalem, Rabbi Nechemia Levi ran to Rabbi Bennett's aid. The attacker took Rabbi Levi's gun and stabbed him. Both died shortly after. Rabbi Levi is survived by his wife and seven children. Today's video is about Tehillim Lamites, chapter 39, in which the suffering author first tries to keep silent and not complain despite pain, before giving in and crying out to God, seeking explanation for his suffering and ultimately seeking divine aid. I want to focus on the first few psukim, the first few sentences, about the author's silence, as explained by Rabbi Meir Leibush, also known as Malbim. As the parak goes, Amarti, I said, I'm going to guard my path such that I won't sin with my tongue. I will keep a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked person is opposite me. I'm not going to give the Rasha, the wicked person, room to argue about faith, and so I will keep silent both my tongue, my internal thoughts, and my lips, my external expression. Ne'elamti dumia, I was mute. Hechshesi mitov, I was even silent from saying anything good. I didn't even mention the good, lest it lead me to complain. I didn't want to get into theodicy, I didn't want to get into philosophy, even to argue on behalf of God, lest I stumble in my faith. I wanted to be silent, as Aharon was after the loss of his children by Yidom Aharon. Hechshesi mitov, I was silent even from the good. Uch evine ekar. But the result of this was that my pain grew. My silence didn't work. Cham libi bekirbi. My heart was hot in my midst. Bahagigi sivar esh. So that when I spoke, fire burst forth. Dibarti bilashoni. And so I needed to speak. The change of heart that we find here in this chapter, in which he begins wanting to be mute, but the silence doesn't work, is reminiscent of a pasuk in Mishlei, the twelfth chapter of Mishlei of Proverbs. When worry is in a person's heart, it drags the heart down, but a good thought will gladden it. That's the simple explanation of the sentence as brought in Rabbi David Altshuler's Mitzudat David commentary. But the Talmud offers two other ways to read the first half of the sentence. That if there is worry in one's heart, it drags the heart down. The Talmud offers two approaches. One is a recommendation. If a person is worrying, he should remove it from his mind. He should take it away from his mind. And then it offers a second approach. If there's worry in a person's heart, the person should speak of it with others. Two different approaches. First, the approach of silence, forget about it. And then second, the approach of speaking about it. Both of these approaches are found in Tehillim in general. The approach of removing the worry, saying, I'm just going to be complete in my faith, is found in Tehillim Chavav, chapter 26. Even when I am in the midst of people who sin and scoff, I will be simple in my faith. I was young and I have aged. I've never seen righteous people suffer. I believe. However, in our chapter, we also find the idea that silence doesn't work for me. 
I must cry out in my pain and seek explanation. The reaction of Vayido Maharon, the silence of Aaron, doesn't work for everyone. One of the most important aspects of Tehillim, I think, is its varied nature. And it's certainly true regarding matters of emuna, of faith. No matter our personal identity, we can find ourselves and our needs reflected in the multivalent travail and turmoil of Tehillim. And we can draw both education and inspiration from its words, whether our method is silence or our method is complaint. May our learning today provide merit from Neche- for Nehemiah ben Yechezkel Zichronol of Rabbi Nehemiah Lavi, and for all who are commemorated on Yom Hazikaron.